Hi everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. A few days ago in my Facebook group, I posted this picture of a doodle I had just made for fun, and I asked people if they doodled. I was excited to see how many people said yes. Some people said they'd like to doodle, but either didn't like their results or felt they couldn't draw. Ugh, let's change that. I'm betting you can draw. And I think you can draw something just like this. <laughs> no, don't panic. No, really. Because this is deceptively easy to do. Now, I am not, <laughs> not a doodle expert. I honestly just started doing it myself. And my uh, uh, style, <laughs> if you can call it one, is pretty devoid of any rules. I just like putting lines on paper, and I like doing it so much that I'd love for you to get the same enjoyment and sheer relaxation from doing it too. It is so therapeutic and calming, I have to say. So grab a piece of paper and a pen. Yes, a pen. Stray lines are going to be okay. We're just doodling, remember. No need to erase or worry about being perfect. Nobody has to see it if you don't want them to. But honestly, I think you're going to want to show it off when you're finished. If you want to doodle, you absolutely can. So let's do this. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. <laughs> My favorite pens for drawing in general are Faber-Castell Pitt Artist Pens and the Sakura Pigma line, which includes the popular Pigma Micron. What I love about both of these lines is that they are waterproof, lightfast, and archival, and offer different nib styles and colors. They can be bought individually or in sets and offer a selection of line widths from a reasonably thick and variable line with a brush nib, for example, to ridiculously fine lines, which is really fun for doodling if you like to have the ability to make teeny tiny details. And it's nice having a choice of pens, but you don't need special pens to draw. A good old Sharpie will do you well. Or a regular ballpoint pen can work too. Or whatever pen feels good in your hand. For this, I'm just working on regular copy paper, but you can do this on watercolor paper or paper that's conducive to alcohol ink like Graphics Opaque White or Duralar or Yupo. And then you can embellish the piece with watercolor or alcohol ink, or you could do an alcohol ink or watercolor piece first and then add these to embellish it. So to begin, I'm going to just draw sort of a soft C. Just something along these lines. And then I'm going to draw one in the other direction, beginning at the same spot that I started the first one and ending at the same spot. And then to fill it in, I'm going to draw lines Again, always starting at the same beginning and ending at the same end. And running alongside the first ones. You can choose to do it all in this direction or you can alternate. That part is entirely up to you. And the spacing doesn't need to be perfect, just close enough. And then I'm gonna be calling these petals just for, to have a term to refer to them. And now I'm going to want petals going in the other directions. For me, it's easier to turn the paper and it doesn't need to be at any particular angle. So if you want yours to go this way or that way, 
but just for simplicity's sake, I'll do it at roughly 90 degree angle. And I'll start out. And again, I want to come back toward that spot. Doesn't matter if the shape is different. And notice how this line, when I came down, I got really close to that first line. So the spacing is different here. That doesn't matter. So it doesn't need to be perfect. As long as you start and end in the same spot, you are golden. Now, the spacing between your lines, like I said, doesn't need to be perfect, but the further apart your lines are, the lighter your petal will appear in color, and then the closer your lines are, the darker it'll, it'll appear. So I'll show you what I mean when I do the next one. So this petal, oh, let's say also that you start a petal and you kind of go, oh, that's a little narrow. It's okay, just make your next line outside to give it a little bit more shape. But let's say that I only drew in that many lines. See how this petal seems lighter in color than these two because it has fewer inner lines. So I can add more lines to darken it up if I want. And the more I add, the darker it'll continue to look. And see now this one looks darker than the other two. So if I want to balance that out, I can come back into the others and give them a couple extra lines to give them a little bit more color, if you will. And then sometimes, I'm going to zoom in to show you, you may not make it all the way down to the end. It's okay. Kind of just fill that in. Now I'm going to do, I can work this way. Do one here. You'll determine which position is most comfortable for you. Like, is it easier for you to push the pen away from you? Is it easier to pull the pen toward you? Are you more comfortable going from left to right? That sort of thing. So now that I've got a couple of these, I can decide whether or not I want to add another petal. But for now, how about we put in another type of element altogether? So here, I'm going to make myself a bit of a teardrop. And then put another one next to it. Now these don't have to all come to the middle. That part's not important. Like I can start another one here if I want. And then to fill these in, I'm not going to put lines that come from the middle out. I'm going to have these lines kind of, for me it's easier this way, I'm going to have these lines cross over. And I don't want to make them cross over in a straight line, but I want to try to arc the little the lines this way. And this is going to give these the illusion of being curved or not quite cylindrical, but not flat. And then, how about we put in something that looks like this. I don't know what to call that. <laughs> no idea. It's just a god. It's an embellishment. Maybe it's a stamen. If this is some sort of flower, maybe this is a stamen of some sort. And how about... We have one that comes over and crosses and does something like that. And maybe there's a third one. It's a little shorter. 
does something like that. Now, you can leave them that way, or you can do this to them to give them a little more interest. Or what I do a lot is fill in this area to give them more weight and have them sort of pop even more. And then let's add another petal just for fun. But for this one, let's have it be behind these two somehow. So it would start, let's say, here. But it can't continue because I don't want to draw over this one. And then this one, this line here, will end there. And I'll have all my lines again start here, but they'll have to end on the edge, edges of these petals. So now it looks like there's one behind. And and do a couple more teardroppy looking things and fill those in. And the more pronounced you make your arcs, the more curved it will look. And I'll make a couple more of these guys because I like them. <laughs> no other reason. Just because they think they're cool. And let's look it over and decide balance wise where else we could throw some of these in or what else maybe could look nice. Now this is becomes a matter of your composition design and your layout. This is where you get to be the designer. And I think that looks pretty good. Now, my mom, when I was talking to her about this, and I said, oh, you'll be able to do this. She said, well, I don't know because I don't know if I'll be able to draw my lines as straight as it looks like you need to be able to draw. That's not important either. Let me show you. So here are a couple. This is one similar to the one we just did and you can vary the size of them also. But I like this one a lot. I think this one's really pretty. But I'm gonna bring it up close to you to show you. See how not straight the lines are compared to maybe this one but it still looks nice because these are really appreciated best from a bit of a distance so that isn't important so don't let not having a super steady hand deter you doodling is for everybody and you can do it too to finish off, if you'd like more contrast and punch, you can emphasize the darker areas by extending them into the petals a little more. You can also use a pencil to add some shading. These look awesome in black and white, but you can use watercolor for just simple shading or full on color. Since this is just on copy paper, I'm opting for colored pencils. As for style, I'm not much of a Zentangle doodler per se, though I do enjoy many of those patterns. I'm less, I don't know, orderly, I think. <laughs> a little more off the wall, goofy abstract, I think. But I hope you feel empowered now to try this. When you do, and, and notice how I said when and not if. <laughs> when you doodle, come show off your versions in my Facebook group. I would love to see. 
If you'd like to see more videos with doodling fun on its own, on watercolor or alcohol ink or all of the above, let me know in the comments. I will be happy to show you how my weird little mind works. <laughs> now start thinking about ways you can add this to your work, your alcohol ink pieces, your watercolor, your journal. Heck, I watched a video where a woman decorated her walls, beautifully by the way, with doodles. What will you try? Tell me all about that in the comments too. Thank you for watching. Let your creative nature shine. See you soon. Bye now.